Yeah, welcome everyone to the Performance Paradox uh, by Shrinivas, Shekhar and Sai Krishnan. We are very glad to have you today. Uh, join us as a speaker. So over to you, uh, Sai and Shrinivas. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for sh- joining our session. So uh, today, me and Srini are going to talk a lot about, uh, you know, mobile performance, how you can optimize them with examples. We got some exciting stuff lined up. Uh, and with that, say a quick intro about us. So I'm Sai and I work for ThoughtWorks as a principal consultant. And I'm also an open source evangelist. I contribute a lot, uh, you know, to open source. Uh, I contributor to Appium and maintainer as well. And a lot of other repositories. And I also do a lot of public speaking. And I believe that because I've learned a lot from the uh, community. So one way or the other to give back you know, our learnings to the community is through conferences and open source. Uh, and I've taken that uh, route. Uh, yeah, uh, Srini, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining for our session today. And I'm Srini. And uh, I'm an open source contributor, maintainer, and API member. Uh, contributed to several other open source repositories. I'm a conference speaker too. Uh, that's me. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Sai, uh, since you have been working in mobile uh, for quite some time, uh, what's your take on uh, mobile performance compared to web performance in general? Uh, okay. So one thing I want to really start off by saying is, uh, you know, mobile performance and web performances are completely different, right? Meaning, uh, you know, you might have a strategy in place for your web performance testing. There could be certain metrics that you might have, or you might look forward, uh, or you might plan to do, but those might not be the same for mobile aspects also. And I'll I'll, I'll tell why, right? Because uh, what I've seen is uh, I've seen I've I've done performances on web, mobile, iOS, Android. Um, so when it comes to mobile performance testing, right, you need, when these kind of performance testing is conducted, it, you know, it's under a variety of conditions, meaning such as different network strengths, which is very important, a battery loads, right, and a device uh, configurations, and ensure that your uh, application's uh, performance is optimized for certain mobile devices, right? I'll give an example over here. So let's say that uh, your app is not optimized well, and there are a lot of issues in it, uh, and it drains a lot, it drains up your battery you know, a lot of resource consumptions. The first thing I would do is not keep that app on my device, right? I would tend to remove that. And I personally do that, right? Because either my my phone gets very laggy and and it just drains battery unnecessary. So I really don't want to. So there are different aspects that we look at it, uh, Srini, when, when we see mobile and web as well. Yeah. So when it comes to web, the first thing that comes to our mind are the metric, right? Uh, what to capture, how to improve when it comes to web. The first thing that comes to mind is the web performance metrics, right? So uh, CLS, cumulative layer of shift, largest contentful plane, time for the first interaction, right? Uh, Likewise, we have so many. So similar to that, we have something on Android and iOS where it's a bit different, as you rightly said, uh, apps draining of battery. So that could be another metric, interesting one. And uh, how much amount of CPU is consumed? That's another interesting metric. And if there is a lag, when it comes to mobile, it's all about gestures, which is different from what we have in web web applications in general. So. Uh, how my uh, how my gestures are able to perform? Uh, will there will that incur some frame lags? If I have a deep scroll uh, or a composite components on top of it, so how is the lag going to be? And how is the CPU metrics will look like if I have my app on background? What 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 is it going to consume? Right. So uh, likewise, we have different metrics for Android uh, and iOS too. Uh, it's quite similar uh, in different names in general for Android and iOS. One such metric that quickly comes to my mind is the startup metric. So the moment you launch your app and uh, and we see the first frame in the screen on our mobile screen, it's one of the metric. How quickly we is our app uh, is getting launched and uh, how long it takes from the launch, the moment we press on the launch button and then we see the complete app. Uh, how we call it, home screen, welcome screen, how uh, the complete uh, welcome screen or the home screen is painted. That's another metric comes under startup. 
So second one is about the frame timing metric, right? Uh, the let's say the uh, frame timing metric. So if I do a complex gesture on my mobile app, let's say I do a lot of scroll to identify something on the mobile app. So how uh, how well uh, how smooth the transitions are from one frame to another frame? Do I see a particular? Do I see a lag? Uh, there is a frame loss, for example. So and that's another metric where we could capture any frame loss frame loss in general. And three is a trace section metric, which is basically uh, within the package, if I navigate from one screen to another screen, or if I do a complex journey, uh, I mean, the basic end-to-end -end journey, if I do a complex journey, uh, what is the number of occurrences of particular frame? Uh, how outputs will actually look like, uh, uh, as like how are the metrics, uh, the minimum, median, and uh, max time that it took. So uh, within the package, uh, the targeted package, we can identify from where to begin and where to end within the trace section metric to identify the traces, right? And power metric. Power metric is a combination and another interesting metric as uh, Sai was also highlighting uh, battery, right? So if I put my app on background, how much amount of battery is drained? That could also be another way to identify how much amount of battery is being consumed by a particular application. Or if I'm using the app actively, when I start from place X and then I've been using the app for, let's say, three minutes, or if I go through a complex journey during the course, how much amount of uh, battery is consumed? Or how much amount of memory is consumed? That's another metric that's interesting one uh, in terms of memory. The next is... Uh, Network metric, which is also coming under power metric. How much amount of packet is transferred via the network? How much of it of packet is downloaded via the network for a particular mobile app? And CPU metric, again, uh, which is basically CPU consumption is what we are trying to figure out uh, from our, for our app. So uh, if it comes to, uh, if it comes to CPU, it's about usage and also CPU time in milliseconds that we wanted to figure out so that we can identify how we could improve. The idea behind all of these metrics is to identify the bottlenecks. So if I identify a bottleneck, the next thing is about how we could improve it. So uh, we have quite a good number of demos lined up all live. Hopefully everything goes smooth. And uh, we might also go on uh, offline on the camera. Uh, so we will come back again for the questions if we, uh, so that because we have uh, two, three projects on uh, Android Studio running up. So we'll start with this uh, performance metrics to start with. Yeah. Okay, exciting stuff. So let me uh, pull out uh, Android Studio. Let's go video just to save my image. Okay. Uh, the first one that we want to see is. Let me Okay. Uh, I believe the code's okay, right, CD? So yes. Quite busy. Uh, yeah. Quite visible. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. So if you look at it over here, right? Uh, uh basically, okay. Before we before we kick start to understand what this code is all about and and things, where how was this test written? What language? So it's basically in Kotlin, and uh, this sits within your Android mobile app. Don't consider this more like a you know top layer of the pyramid as a black box. This is purely you know it's it sits along in in your uh, app's uh, code. Okay. So with that said, uh, let's start looking into each of these lines of code and understand a bit more what each of these lines do and, and why. Right? So the first thing that you see is, uh, you know, something called as a macro benchmark rule. So there are two things in Android. Uh, one is a macro benchmark and a micro benchmark. So a micro is very low level, right? It, it possibly tests a specific function, a specific rendering frame, a layer. But a macro benchmark is at a high level, which is like, you know, probably takes a journey uh, that you typically want to check, right? Maybe you open your app, you log in, and then you, you scroll, like Srini said, and then probably want to do some clicks and stuff like that. So that's like a very uh, a, a user-centric uh, space, right? So macro benchmarking rule is more at a high level. Okay? And uh, if you see over here, uh, we are trying to measure certain uh, metrics over here. And what are those metrics that we want to uh, measure? That's what like Srini was talking about. One is we want to measure the, the startup uh, metrics, which is, uh, you know, you open your app. How long does your app take to launch, right? Typically, we, we see that in a lot of mobile applications, right? You you just click on that app icon from your home screen and uh, you get a logo or a, 
uh, you know, a landing screen and then it loads and then it gets in, right? Then eventually you, you see the screen that you would typically want to. So that's like the startup time. So we want to know how long your app, you know, actually starts, right? Now let's say you, you know, you, you open Instagram and it just doesn't open and it sits there for like about 30 to 50 seconds. I mean, this is not a very good performance aspect, right? So you would definitely just kill the app and go away and probably look at something else. Uh, so it's very, very important to look at how your startup metrics can be uh, better if there's something not fine. And from a trace section metrics, there are multiple things that we can uh, look at, right? Uh, you can see about how your activity start time, your activity resume time and things, right? Uh, in the similar way, there are multiple, uh, you know, trace section metrics that you can actually uh, measure. And the next one is, uh, you know, power metric. Uh, right now, we are going to uh, look at battery, meaning, let's say when your application is in use, right? You're using an application, probably you're doing a post or whatever, so it could be. And uh, you basically want to know uh, when your app is being used, does my app consume a lot of the, a lot of my uh, phone's uh, battery, right? Power. So that's very, very important, uh, you know, to keep one of the metrics when it comes to uh, mobile performance. So we'll also measure this, right? Maybe a question might pop into your mind. How does it matter? Because I'm connecting my device. It's already charging, right? Now, what typically this power metric would do is, even though your device is connected through a cable, and it's, uh, let's say, typically when we connect, we know that it charges, right? So when this power metric kicks in, uh, what uh, Android does is it would cut off your uh, power from your laptop to your device. And, uh, and, and so that way, you, you will clearly get to know that, okay, I'm using my app for an X and Y journey and I get to know what has the power been consumed. Okay. And the next is the compilation mode. We'll talk about this compilation mode in a while. So we'll come back to it. Uh, and probably uh, because you need to understand something more in, in the next few minutes. And then we'll come back to, you know, what is compilation mode and understand uh, better about compilation mode. And uh, the next uh, thing over here is uh, startup mode which is cold. So there are three types of start startups over here. One is a, a cold, a warm, and a hot. Okay. So what this typically means is, uh, like I've already mentioned here. Uh, so let's say if it's from, from a cold aspect, right? Meaning the app process is not alive. Okay. Uh, so to just give an example to understand what is this app process and, and it must be started in addition to the activity creation, right? I'll give an example, right? So, okay, I've already connected my real device uh, to, to, to my machine. And I'm just trying to just stream it out. Uh, and one thing to note is uh, uh, it's highly, highly recommended to do all of your performances on a real device and not on emulators or simulators. Uh, the whole reason being because they're not the same, right? Because uh, your emulators share your system, CPU, a lot of things. But whereas for a device, it, it's a whole different. And that's exactly how your users would be using it in, in, in production. Uh, okay, let me unplug it and plug it back just to see if I could get it streaming. But the device is kind of, oh, there you go. So the device is there. Right? So let's say now, for example, so if I do this, so these are all the apps which is running in the background, right? So what that cold start means is it 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 says that, hey, I don't want my app to be running in the back. I mean, the activity should not be started, right? It needs to be like, it's still not open. So it, it's opening for the first time, right? A similar way, you have a warm and a hot as well. And uh, okay, I can, I'm going to put this aside for now. Okay, so that's one example. So the second uh, one that we want to show is uh, we'll come back to uh, this on the later part. So I'm going to comment this out. So the next one uh, we will also uh, come over here is a similar kind of a setup, which we have for this test. Uh, but here we have something called as partial for compilation mode. So we'll come to that and talk a little bit more. Uh, what does this partial compilation mean? And over here, if you see, I'm, I'm typically doing a journey, right? So I'm, I'm like pressing a home button and I'm starting an activity. And the activity is this. What is an activity? When I say I start an activity, right? It means that hey, every application will have an activity name, like a package, right? So I'm saying that, hey, this is the package name you launch. So from that, I'm going to start the activity and wait. And then I'm going to add and add elements and scroll. So basically, I'm going to click some you know buttons and it's going to add some elements in my app. And I'm going to keep scrolling that. Way. And if you see, the press home and start activity and wait is coming actually from a native Android code. Uh, but whereas the add elements and scroll is a simple uh, code that we have basically written, right? So it, it clicks on a button and, uh, you know, it just clicks on the list view uh, and it tries to do it 30 times because I need to, I need to add a lot of things into the list, right? And I wait for it to the frame rates to be done. 
uh, and I basically fling it down so that I go to the bottom of the last element, which is the 29th element, and I click on it, and I basically wait for it to appear. Right? I mean, if you look through this, right, it is it it does look like a a user journey for you because that's typically what you might tend to. Okay. Now we'll go and sort of uh, very quickly run these tests. And parallelly, I'll also show what is going to happen, right? Uh, did we talk about iterations? Sorry, I missed that iteration part as it is running. So iterations, pretty self-explanatory. 10, I mean, we have just marked it 10, meaning that, uh, you know, I'm going to run these tests for 10 iterations, right? So that uh, this app is going to start, wait for the activity, close down, come up, and things like that. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay, so it, it's done now. It doesn't do anything much because that's exactly what the test says. The test says just open it and done. That's pretty much it says. And it's going to do it 10 times because iterations is 10. So we'll just give it a while uh, and uh, see what kind of metrics this can give out. And then we'll discuss about those metrics. What are those numbers? What it means and things like that. As it is running, uh, meanwhile, if there's anything that you want to ask us, maybe you can you know post your questions. Uh, happy to take it up because this is going to take at least like probably a minute, not more than that. Because we have two tests to be uh, run over here. Okay, go. Okay, let's see what's our run saying. Okay, so for one set, oh, we have got uh, some metrics. So we'll talk about it in a while. Or maybe Srini, as the yeah. second test is running, we can talk about the metrics, right? Uh, yes. uh, before that, I'll just show them what is the second test doing, right? So it just clicks on me 20, 30 times. So you get those elements, it scrolls, it goes to that element uh, 29 and it waits for the uh, activity that the screen to be loaded. That's pretty much it's doing 10 times. Okay. So meanwhile, we'll go back and see uh, what those metrics mean to us and stuff. Cool. Uh, maybe we can. I'll increase this. Yeah. So we can go from bottom to top. Right. So the first one that we wanted to do is a startup metric, right? How long it takes for my app to launch and to for me to see the first frame rendering on the app screen, right? So that's what it is all about when it comes to startup metric, which is time to initial display milliseconds. So which exactly has minimum, median, and max. Let's not focus on min and max, whereas we can uh, look into the median. So it takes around 60 milliseconds for uh, this app to launch and see the first frame, right? And the second one is about, uh, there is another uh, interesting metric inside startup itself, which is called time to full display milliseconds. And here we have the power metric next, which is, uh, I think Sai has enabled only battery. So the battery here is about uh, when we start and when we end, and also the difference between uh, when we started and ended. So how much amount of battery is being consumed is the ideal motto here. So you could see that uh, the median, when we have started, it was 2946 milliseconds. And when we have ended, it's again still 2946 milliseconds. So uh, it's for the simple app, where in which doesn't have any complex gestures, nothing to do with this complex app. So that's the reason why we don't have any uh, differences here. But on a real world, wherein you have a complex mobile app, uh, you will definitely see some kind of differences. And the journey is also pretty simple here. We have just launched the app for this. But you can also enable this for the other journeys that we have. Like as I said, you click 30 times and then scroll down. Uh, probably the battery might have consumed a bit more than uh, 2946. Right. So this is the difference where we could uh, identify for a journey, how much amount of battery is being consumed by your mobile app on the mobile. And if you have noticed, as I said, uh, the moment it is power battery, uh, the even though my laptop is connected to the device, it will automatically disconnect the charge. So which is basically the pure consumption of your battery can be identified here. And the third one is also uh, third one is uh, tracing metric. So we are trying to trace different activities. One is start activity, and then, I mean, activity start, and then activity resume, choreographer do frame, choreographer do frame, right? So these are separate activities to deal with. So trace uh, trace metric is purely about uh, captures the time taken for the named trace section. 
So for this activity to start and to, I mean, the begin and the end section for this activity, it took around 71 seconds. And for resume, it took around 38 seconds. And for choreographer, it took around 513 uh, milliseconds, basically, not seconds, sorry. So this is about startup metric, uh, battery metric. Similar to battery, we have CPU memory and things. We have focused mainly on the battery here, but we'll see the other, uh, other metrics as well in the upcoming demos. So we have identified the time taken for launch, time taken, for, I mean, the battery consumption. We also talked about traces for this particular activity, right? So the second test was all about, uh, you, do, you did a journey here. So which is basically uh, click on a particular button 30 times and then scroll down. And the number of iterations here is three. So if you click on an iteration, it does opens the trace and it also gives you uh, uh, more fine grain details about the profiler where uh, which may, I mean, which, uh, I mean, which frame took more time, which thread is consuming a lot more time. What do we exactly run on the Android main thread? We can identify all of these details when you go inside the profiling aspect, right? It also gives you uh, CPU, there is a spike in memory. All of those bits can be identified from our profile. And it also identifies any janky frames if there is anything that is delaying your, uh, uh, I mean, uh, user experience if the scroll is not smooth. There are two main metrics we see here. One is the frame overrun milliseconds. Uh, the frame overrun milliseconds is nothing but when you do a scroll, uh, how many, I mean, basically the time a frame misses its deadline, which is nothing but the frame overrun metric. If this metric is on positive, we have 50 percentile, 90 percentile, 95 percentile, 99 percentile. Now on the 95th percentile, we see 51 milliseconds. If the number is on positive, which means it has missed a frame. I mean, uh, which uh, basically, if you see, it has dropped a certain frames. That's why the number is on positive. Our, our uh, general intention here is to keep, uh, basically, to give a smoother sprawl experience. The frame should be faster than the actual deadline. So uh, frame, uh, if it is a negative, then it means it is better. So here it is 51 milliseconds overrun by actual uh, deadline that we have. So the lesser the value is, is smoother the experience is. You can take it in that way. Next is frame duration CPU millisecond. This is basically the time for produce, I mean, time to produce a frame on the CPU. Uh, again, for 50th percentile, it looks uh, lesser, but in uh, 95th percentile, you could see that it is 43 milliseconds it took for the CPU to render on an average for three iterations. It's good to have a longer iterations rather than keeping shorter iterations. So that, I mean, it's good to have the number of iterations a bit higher than. Uh, uh, we have, but for the demo purpose, we have reduced it so that we could uh, showcase some uh, uh, differences here. So these are two crucial metrics to identify if there is any visible jankiness in terms of uh, experience of uh, uh, mobile gestures. Uh, yeah. So this is all about the core metrics we have, the four top four core metrics that are eventually required for us to start with in terms of uh, mobile performance. Let's also quickly go ahead and talk about uh, memory consumption in terms of how we could uh, identify the leaks. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we saw a few of these metrics, um, you know, which Srini spoke about. Another very important aspect to look through is memory leaks, right? And uh, let's look through it and understand what is memory leak and, and what are the things that come into play, right? So generally, memory leaks occur uh, when an allocated memory is not freed, right? Uh, after it's no longer needed. Uh, but which eventually, uh, you know, accumulates unused memory and things bad can happen. Right? And some things to talk about is like a garbage collection. Right? Uh, so uh, probably I, I'll use an analogy. So yesterday I was out for a dinner, uh, you know, it was a wedding. So I went out for a dinner and, uh, you know, when I was at this dinner party, right. And I saw people, you know, serving food on plates, which is so-called the object in memory over here. And once your uh, guests, which is a program are done eating, uh, you know, uh, eating from the eating from the plates, uh, what happened was they no longer need them, right? Instead, letting the plates pile up on the table, which is consuming memory, so-called, you know, you or someone else uh, is a garbage collector who's a garbage collection, comes by and throws out the memory. So now what happens here is, you know, throws, throws out the empty, unused plates, which is so-called deallocating memory, right? Making room for more. 
Now, what happens if this garbage collector doesn't come in time and throughout, and if the memory keeps allocating, just piling up, it's not good, right? And uh, what's this Android drawing window? So most of you would have heard about FPS, right? Frames uh, per second. So that that's also very important when you consider uh, performance. So in Android, uh, if if it's anything above sixteen milliseconds, right, uh, then something is going to mess up. Right? So I'll take about one one example over here, right? So your memory allocation increases in 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 larger and uneven portions, right? And uh, similar is if the memory is not being deallocated properly, that's a big problem. And what happens with these? Your heap also grows ex excessively. And uh, what kind of problems arises by all of this? I'm sure some of you would have seen in Android devices, uh, it's called ANR, which is Android not responding, right? You'll get that on pop-up which says, hey, uh, the app is not responding. Do you want to wait or do you want to close? So these kind of problems would eventually come up uh, when uh, you know when these uh, when these memory leaks are found in your app uh, and also when the memory leak increases in large and unseen portions, right? And uh, forced garbage collector. So what happens during this, right? So let's say a system in initiates a large garbage collector when memory issues become severe, right? So because see, generally what happens is uh, when there's a memory leak, you know, a smaller garbage collector uh, comes into play and, uh, you know, tries to, you know, uh, keep removing this unused memory. Then the larger one comes into play, keeps removing. So what happens is a time frame for them to do, let's say from 50 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. See, I'm talking about milliseconds, right? And it's all in like very tiny numbers, like 50 and 100. But even when when things go within this gap of 50 and 100 milliseconds, and that's where you would basically see your uh, your app, uh, you know, lagging and it gets frozen. You'll scroll, it scrolls, but you would see like Strini was talking about, right? It's got this janky screen. So now we, we see a lot of these problems when this memory leak happens, what kind of problems come into play and, 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 and stuff. But how do we know there's a memory leak in your app? And uh, if there's a memory leak, how do we take this back to our devs to say, hey, there's a memory leak happening in X, Y space. And I, I can clearly see this. And uh, probably, the, you know, the app needs some attention, right? So let's go ahead and uh, quickly look at a, a demo over here again uh, for to how do we identify memory leaks and where does the memory leak actually happen? Okay. So there's another app that we have picked over here, a very simple, similar uh, app. So this app has got uh, two activities. One is uh, with with leak and without leak. So what we're going to do is we're going to build the app uh, first with with leak, okay, into the real device. And so just I'm just launching it up. So let it come through the device. Okay, that's pretty much. And it's a very simple app, right? So you see, it says Start Memory Manager. So I'm going to click on that on my real device as I'm speaking now, and it says Finish Me and See the Profiler. Right. So what is this profiler? So this Android comes with this something called as Android profiler. So I'm, I'm going to open that up. Okay. And let me uh, start a, a new one for this app. I'm going to start profiling something new. Okay. So you could see this, right? So let's observe one thing. Uh, okay. So if you see on this, uh, memory leak right over here there's no, there's nothing much so as in as i keep clicking on this app button right so you would see there's a dot appearing so these are all the kind of you know the, the exact time exact space where the main activity activities are invoked when a memory leak activity has been started when it is stopped so you can see right it says a memory leak activity stopped right and then the main activity comes into play then the memory leak activity would start. So I'm typically like clicking on it like three multiple times, right? I'm just not doing anything. It's a simple click. And one thing to observe, just have an eye on this, which is the memory. It's 58. So it went to 60. Uh, let's keep doing this for a while. Right. And I'll just give it some time. So it went to 62, 63. Okay. So you can clearly see the memory is bumping up. That's that's okay. So let's go and see what does this mean. So I'll click on this memory here, and I'll I'll just do a, a capture heap dump, right? And I'll do a record of it. And all of this comes default in Android Studio. These profilers and and all of this stuff, right? So let's wait for it to fetch the results. Okay. So and if you look through this space over here, the profiler clearly says that there are two leaks happening in this application. Okay, 
So, but I need to know what are those two leaks, right? So let's go ahead and look through. So one way is, uh, you know, you can also identify it with this, this icon over here. So it clearly says this too, there's some attention needed for it. Uh, or you can also just click on this uh, two leaks. So that's going to filter out the activities, which has got the two leaks. So you could see it's the memory leak activity, uh, which is basically, uh, it's exactly this, right? So if you look through this, this is the same activity that you could see. Okay. So that's the activity which my app is basically uh, running on. So it knows that, oh, okay, this is the activity which has got the problem and this needs attention. Right. And uh, now let's go back and I'll just change this to a, um, without a leak. Right. I'm going to re, I'll stop and rebuild the app. Okay. And uh, let's quickly go ahead and uh, I'm just going to do this back and forth again, just clicking around it. And now let's uh, start the profiler. I'm going to start a new one so that it could capture all the results out from there. Okay. And then let's click on memory and then capture the uh, heap dump, right? Okay. L as it's capturing the heap dump, let's make some observations. Cool. And now if you observe, there are no leaks over here. Now it says there are zero leaks, right? That, so which means we have fixed the problem. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. So let's go back in. I'm just doing a quick time check as well. Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah. So we talked about memory, how we could identify the leaks in uh, our mobile app when it comes to memory. Uh, the other interesting concept on Android here is, I, I know there are quite a few questions, so we'll definitely uh, come there uh, parallelly. And uh, the interesting concept of, from Android here is about the baseline profiling for your production. So uh, profiling here uh, is basically on uh, guided optimization, I would say. Uh, which is basically, uh, if I know there is a certain journey or my app uh, startup time has to be lesser, Android does give another profiling mechanism. So uh, I could see that, uh, I could sense that there are a lot of questions, okay, if it is for Android days, how about iOS? Okay, if it is for a native app, how about hybrid app? If it is on a pure Kotlin, then how about me developing an app on React Native or an Vue? Uh, we'll come back and answer all of these, and we'll also suggest few uh, tools that are available in market that could help we all. But uh, coming back to the uh, topic on baseline profiling, which is an interesting concept from Android himself, which is uh, something, a file, which has, uh, instead of doing just-in-time compilation, I compile whatever my journey needs in upfront and package it and send it to store. And when we are installing the APK from uh, APK or AAB from store, we basically, uh, I mean, store gives you another file, which we don't see, which is basically called baseline profile. So baseline profile file contains ahead of time compiled activities for your journey. Because for this journey, uh, let's say for the current sample app journey, we have a uh, profile for baseline and shipped it, packaged it, shipped it to store. And when we have installed it, it uh, when we are installed it and launch our app and go through the journey, it will be more faster. The reason for that is uh, because we are using an optimization mechanism here called ahead of time compilation for a specific code path, code path instead of a just-in-time compilation. Just-in-time compilation will always be slower Whereas uh, head of time compilation will always be faster uh, because we know that it's already compiled, pre-compiled and the activities will launch pretty quick, which will eventually, I mean, by definition of Google, they say that 30 percentage more effective than the non-profiled or non-baseline profiled one. And uh, the start, we can use this for startup enhancement or uh, reducing any jank uh, in a particular flow or we can also use it to improve the overall runtime performance of your mobile app, which will eventually lead into better retention, better user transactions, better ratings of your mobile app, 
because the experience of the users will be pretty smooth because it's already pre-compiled and ahead of time compiled rather than doing the compile, I mean, just in time compilation, right? So uh, that's the pure benefit of how uh, baseline profiling can help us in general, right? So uh, let's go and see this in action as a live demo again. Uh, but a small portion of creating this profile has already been done by us, but we will still go ahead and show how we could do the baseline profile creation. Yeah. So let's go back to the, the previous one. Baseline. Okay, so this is this baseline generator uh, script which we have already uh, created, but I'll show you how the script would look like. It's, it's pretty uh, simple uh, script. Uh, we'll also share all of these uh, scripts out, uh, the links and stuff like that. So if you look through this, right? So we here we have a baseline profile uh, rule. So previously, when you look through, when we were doing our, uh, uh, you know, the macro, ben it was macro benchmarking profile. And here it's the baseline profile. So there are different profiles for different cases over here. And uh, the next thing is, uh, of course, uh, it's just a package that you want to do. And, and you're saying the rule is basically to, to collect it over here. And it's a similar stuff. You press a home, you start an activity, and that's typically a journey that we are completely doing for this specific journey. So you see, we don't have iterations here, right? Because we're not doing a performance testing over here. So we are just telling, hey, for this journey, because I see this is one of the very critical journeys for my users, which is from a, from a product perspective, is going to make a, a, a lot of lot of money for us. So let it be from a login to a checkout, right? So I'm going to put that as a journey, and I'm going to like basically, uh, you know, create a baseline profile here, right? So by running this, you would basically get this entire, uh, you know, uh, uh, startup, uh, you know, text. If you look through this, this is all auto-generated from that specific uh, code, right? And you see this, it just picks that the entire code for that entire journey, and it basically compiles it up. Okay. And now what happens is I need to move that, uh, you know, dot .txt, uh, baseline generated dot .txt file uh, inside the main. Okay, that's where the main is your apps main basically. Okay, and that's pretty much. And then we are actually gonna we could eventually go and start the a benchmark out. Right? So let's go ahead now. Come back to this test. If you remember, you know, few minutes back we were talking, you know, about these metrics, and we said, hey, uh, we'll we'll come back to what this compilation mode none means, and also the compilation mode uh, partial means, right? So let's keep that test for now. Give me a minute. It just hung. Okay. So, so what basically this is uh, doing over here is, so the initial and partial means is for the initial aspect. Okay. It just left some, see that we're just talking about memory leaks and stuff. Janky. It's all the same. It's, it's we do have that in IntelliJ as well. Uh, okay. Partial. So that there we are. So I'll probably comment out this, the scrolling code. We don't need it for now because uh, we're not looking at any of the uh, frames, but more, we are more interested on this compilation mode and partial, right? So what basically none over here means is none means, you know, I'm going to run this test without a baseline profile and I'm going to run this test with a baseline profile. That's your partial, which is a compilation mode. Okay. So let's go ahead and then uh, run them up. Okay, yeah, that looks good. So probably I'm going to reduce this iteration to, let's say, five. I think the more the iteration is better, but just given time, I'm going to move it to five. So, and what we can do is uh, we can quickly just uh, run these two, right? And what you can what you can expect out of this when we run is uh, the one without the profile uh, is going to take a, a, lo a longer than the one with the baseline profile. So, which means the startup time with, with the baseline profile is going to be much, much better in the journey. Uh, and the other one is definitely going to be, they, we can actually see there's a lot of difference happening there. And my uh, tests basically are, are running now. Okay. So let's, let's give it a uh, time for us to do this.
Okay. Uh, maybe Srini, do we want to take up questions? Uh, I guess yes. three. Parallelly, parallelly we can do it. Right? Answering them. Okay. okay. Uh, as we speak. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we have um, around seven, eight questions on the Q and A. Also, yes. uh, we are left like just five minutes into the session, so uh, we can take a couple of them and then go to the hangout area. So um, Shri and Sai will be available on the hangout table with their name. Uh, we can have uh, we can continue our discussion over the table. Sounds good. Okay, we have some. We have an output here. So let's go quickly look through what are we hunting for here. Okay. Give me a minute. There's too many windows floating around. Uh, okay. So the first one is uh, with compilation none. So that, so then we're going to look at our start time. And the next one is the compilation uh, with it. Right. Okay. So if you look through it, right, because I've made, made it small iterations, but when you have a larger iterations, you can clearly see the difference. So you see the startup time here is uh, 5.29 in the medium and here it's 5.26, right? Uh, you might feel it's, it's I mean, not much difference. Like I said, if your iterations are bigger, you can clearly see these differences, right? Uh, and uh, for the smaller iterations, that's pretty much what we can see. But with the larger iterations, let's say you run this for, let's say about uh, maybe 15, 20, even 30 iterations when you try to run that, you can definitely see the differences in these startup times. And uh, the difference is when we are talking and what we have seen in real world projects uh, in the past, Shini, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, at least we have seen uh, startup times improving uh, roughly about uh, 30 to 40 percent, right, Srini? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's go back and uh, demo. Okay, I want to, we want to give this credits for this, all these apps, uh, these awesome people have built. So we have taken and we have reused this. So you can also go through uh, these links to find these uh, sample examples. Uh, and me and Srini are running an advanced Appium workshop tomorrow. Uh, and there's going to be a full day workshop, exciting stuff lined up. And if you really want to learn uh, more uh, about Appium and all the advanced things, uh, please do go register. We have a few more slots left out, which I saw this early this morning. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sri. Thank you, Sai, for uh, you know joining in and sharing your insights with us. Thank you. Thanks all for joining us. Right. I'll see you all in the hangout room. Bye bye.